Hello and welcome to today's Astranti Bite Size video. What we're going to be looking at today is an extract from one of our tuition videos. And this video is all about something you may have heard a lot about in the news, and that's blockchain. Now, this is taken from one of our E1 videos, but that's not to say it's not useful for the rest of you SEMA students. In fact, blockchain is even on the E3 syllabus. So, let's take a look at blockchain and i suppose the first question we've got to ask ourselves is what exactly is it well in its most simple description a blockchain is a growing list of records and these are called blocks and these blocks are linked together using cryptography now each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block a timestamp and transaction data. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds already a little confusing. And I think it's really important to know that you don't have to know how blockchains work for your exam, just how it impacts on a business. But that's not to say we're not gonna look at this in slightly more detail, because I just wanna give you a kind of broad brushstroke understanding of what blockchain is. So don't worry, although I've got these three bullet points up on screen, we are gonna go into it with more detail in a second. So let's take that information that we know that each block has the previous block's hash, a timestamp, and the transaction data. What we're gonna do now is look at the characteristics of the block, and then we're gonna move on to the second part of that, which is the characteristic, characteristic pardon me, of the chain which links the blocks. So in the block is where digital information is stored. So let's imagine, for example, that you are making a purchase from an online retailer that uses some form of blockchain technology like Bitcoin. Now in the block will be details of your transaction. So that'd be what you bought, when you bought it, and how much you spent on it. That's all stored in the block. So let's bring up the next characteristics. And the first of those is that the information about your transaction is encrypted so that stored details are turned into a unique digital signature. And then each block is given a unique hash code, which then distinguishes it from other blocks. Now it's important to realize that a block isn't just holding, say for example, your transaction data. In fact, a block can hold hundreds or thousands of items of data. So that could be lots of Bitcoin transactions, for example. Now the block also must be verified. So if we're sticking with our example, that would be by the retailer to confirm the value of the purchase and the transaction details. And one vital thing to realize about blockchain is it's very difficult to alter the contents of the block. Now we're going to come back to that in a bit, but firstly, let's just bring up a, a diagram to represent a blockchain. So what we've got are our blocks. So these are basically groups of transaction data. And here we go. We've got our block one, block two, block three, and each one of course has a hash code we already know. Now we're going to come back to this diagram as well. Okay. But before we do, I want to talk about the chain characteristics. Now we know, don't we, that the blocks are connected to each other by a chain. And that happens once the block is complete. Multiple connected blocks form a chain. And that's how we get our name, blockchain. And it's the chain that makes the information stored in the blocks secure. And that's because as soon as a block is verified, so remember we had to say, well, we said a block has to be verified by a retailer, it then attaches itself to the block at the end of the chain. Now, as we can see, or as we saw in our diagram, each block in the chain is connected to the one preceding it and then the one following it. That's the chain. Now, the hash code, which again we saw on the block, is related to the contents of of the previous block so that if a single piece of information in a block changes then the hash code of the next block will be no longer valid and that's because the hash code relates to the info stored in the previous block now if the hash code is no longer valid that block cannot be a part of the chain as the blocks on either side will not recognize it remember we said it's the chain that makes 
the blocks secure. And basically what we're talking about here is the order of the blocks. Now once a record is made in a block, it can't be altered because that would mean altering all the blocks that have been added after it in the chain. Because remember, all the hash codes relate to the previous block. So if the information changes, the hash codes are no longer valid. So let's go back to our diagram now. And we can see here that we've got our chain, which is the public database. And all we mean by that really is the database is just a container to store data. And in blockchain, the chain is that database. It's the container for the block, which is the data. And it can be accessed by the public. And this is just going over the information we saw. If we look at the middle block, that block hash code only relates to the previous block that has the hash code 789M and the 455Y block after. And if the transaction information changes, it means that the blocks are no longer able to connect to the chain. So there we go. That's a broad understanding of how blockchains work. Remember, you don't really need to know how they work for the exam. Transactions, as we mentioned very briefly in our example when we talked about Bitcoin, may be attributed to currency. And there's lots of different chains in use for recording different currencies. Now, all Bitcoin transactions are recorded on one chain, for example, while another currency that's not so well known, Ethereum, has its own chain. Now, we don't need to know anything about Bitcoin or any other currency. It's just important to remember there are many different blockchain chains currently in use. So basically, an easy way to think of a blockchain is as having its own ledger. But blockchain just doesn't have to relate to currencies. In fact, it can record a wide number of activities such as transactions for business or records of ownership of assets. Basically, any kind of data that people want recorded so they can use as evidence in the future. Because, of course, the data won't be changed. It will be locked there. So there we go. That is blockchain. What we're going to look at now is the more important for your exam, blockchain in business. Now, the most common use for blockchain at the moment is as a way of handling transactions, but it can also be used to transfer as well as store money without needing them to be recorded and processed by a separate body such as a bank. When, of course, the bank charges a fee for doing this, but the blockchain moderates itself. Now, whilst banks safeguard money, they are an unnecessary third party when using blockchain because blockchain itself offers a safe place, the chain, to store money. Now, it is not owned by anyone, but it is a shared, widely accessible system and it provides a record of events between groups which can be trusted by them even if the groups don't know anything about each other. Now, once a block is added to a chain, those records of a transaction are accessible to anyone, not just the two groups involved in the transaction. Now, this makes it a form of open bookkeeping. Now, one invaluable way blockchain can be used by an accountant is to redefine how transactions are undertaken, moderated, checked and stored. Now, transactions can be held by the chain and once in the chain, they can't be changed, which ensures an audit trail of information, storing and evidencing transactions and other accounting entries. OK, so that's blockchain and business. Now let's have a look at the benefits of blockchain to the finance function. And well, I'll bring them up all on screen first. We've got security, reduced cost, cross-border repayments, real-time accounting, traceable money or assets, and smart contracts. And the first of those is something we've touched upon before, which is security. Now, the chain nature of blockchain means transactions are linked and a hacker would need information on the rest of the chain to be able to alter any block before it, as well as access to all the copies of the blockchain in the network. Any block editing is therefore extremely unlikely due to the complexity and interconnection of each block 
and the network storing them. This added level of security could change how transactions with parties outside of the business are made and recorded in the finance function. The next benefit to the finance function is reduced costs. And we've already talked about how the transactions don't need a bank. And that's one way that costs are reduced because it's a bank free system. And that means any charges from banks are going to be removed. Now, blockchain could also provide a low cost way to store and secure all other types of transactions in the future. The next benefit is cross border payments. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried sending money abroad, but if you have, you will know that it's a slow, expensive and sometimes tricky process. Now, this can be just as frustrating for businesses. However, blockchain has the potential to change this and networks such as RippleNet are starting to appear, which can allow businesses to make blockchain transactions with one another. Now, they provide a fast, inexpensive and direct alternative for the finance function to sending and receiving money from abroad. The next benefit is smart contracts. Now, these smart contracts use blockchain technology to allow the transfer of any assets, not just currency, through a contract written in computer code. Now, it is the same principle as a transaction being added to the blockchain, as the smart contract will only become active once it has been verified by a network of computers. Now, again, this removes the need for a third party and is extremely difficult to tamper with. This can make the recording of the transfer of assets much simpler and much safer. Now, the next benefit is money and assets are traceable. Now, transactions and ownership are entirely traceable as a record can't be changed after it's made. We've already seen that, haven't we? Now, for example, if an asset such as an office building was bought by a business in 2017 and recorded in the blockchain, there would forever be evidence that the business owned that asset at that time. Now, this way to check ownership and history of assets is an especially important in the finance profession. Okay, and the last benefit is real-time accounting. Now, as blockchain records all the details of a transaction and these have been validated, these could be added to the balance sheets in real time using automated technology. As the blockchain system is widely accessible, tax administrators could access an organization's transactions to calculate and deduct tax in real time. Stakeholders and regulating bodies could also access an organization's transactions in real time, reducing the need for annual financial reports. So there we go. There are our six benefits of blockchain to the finance function. But there are also some challenges we should have a look at first. And the first of those challenges is financial reporting. Now, as mentioned earlier on, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin use blockchain and each form of currency has their own chain or ledger. Now, however, cryptocurrencies didn't exist when accounting standards were designed. And it is unclear how they should be treated for financial reporting purposes. Now, should they be treated as a type of cash, like traditional currencies like sterling or euro? Or should they be treated as an intangible asset similar to intellectual property? Should they be treated as financial instrument, like a share or a bond? Or should they be treated as inventory, like the physical goods in the business? So far, there's been no consensus on the issue, and this poses a real challenge for the future to the finance function. And the next challenge is the complexity. Now, I don't know if you've encountered Bitcoin before, but Bitcoin's underlying technology is complex. And while we have seen significant potential for blockchain in finance to secure transactions and undertake accounting, it is in a very early stage of development. And the complexity of the technology could prevent many organizations from making full use of blockchain until it matures further. So there we go. There's our problems with complexity that it's just too complex for some businesses and it's still at a relatively early stage of its development so there we go let's zoom back 
to our main screen because that is the end of today's video on blockchain now blockchain has got this reputation as a relatively complex subject so why don't you try out and see how much you know by going onto our Astranti website and trying out one of our exam practice kits or our mock exams so you can see how well you're going to do on these subjects before you actually sit the exam or perhaps you just want to check out more of our tuition videos because remember we've got every SEMA subject in one of our tuition videos so again go on to the Astranti website but perhaps you just want more of these videos coming every week and who would blame you so if you do be sure to like this video and to subscribe to our channel and good luck with your vision and thank you very much for watching today